Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. So, in this video, we're going to be benchmarking this PC over here. If you haven't seen the build video, it's absolutely awesome. Go check it out. But this is an Intel i9 processor with RTX 3070. And we're going to be benchmarking, you know, the CPU, GPU. We're going to look at the SSD speeds and loads of other tests. Now, I have done all the hardware tests before, but one final test I left it to do it live. And I don't actually know what the test is. And we're going to be comparing this to this my main pc which is uh, ryzen 9 3950x 16 core processor and 2060 super so as you can see graphics card and cpu they kind of go like this but it will be interesting to see which one is better and i'm coming from a creator's point of view so we're going to be testing some of the professional applications so definitely stay tuned till the end of the video to see benchmark of this these two pcs live on premiere pro artlist is an affordable way to license all the music you need for your projects whether it's personal, commercial, TV, podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, you get the point. You name it, it's covered. No more worrying if your music licensing covers your project. One worldwide license that covers it all. Oh, and that's not all. Artlist also includes tons of sound effects and the music is updated daily, so you never run out of choice. If you're wondering, how did I get all these nice shots of B-roll? Well, it's called Artgrid a site similar to Artlist but for video. Artgrid can provide all the stock footage you need from HD to 8K, profile formats, log or graded to assure that it can be personalized and fitted to your current project. And Artgrid works the same as Artlist, one worldwide license that covers it all. So it's simple, choose the license that you need and that fits your budget and Enjoy the unlimited downloads without any extra cost added. Get two extra months for free when you join Artgrid or Artlist through the links provided. Check out Artlist and Artgrid in the video description below. Now, if you want to check out every single specific spec of this PC, I'm going to leave both of the PC specs in the description below, as well as the build videos. If you want to get one of these or, you know, want to build one of these or similar stations for you, you can do that. But let's start with some of the benchmarks then. So I've got my book over here and I'm going to start reading some of the benchmarks for you then. And this is going to be our base system. So all the benchmarks, whether it's faster or slower, are going to be compared to this one. So this is our base system and this is our comparison system. First of all, we're going to look a bit at Cinebench R23. Interestingly, both the single and multi-score on the i9 10900K are slower than the Ryzen 3950X. Now the single core is 1.1% slower and the multi-core is 31% slower. Now obviously the multi-core kind of makes sense because there's 16 cores and 32 threads on this side and only 10 cores and 20 threads on this side. But the single core, usually Intel is better like this because the boost clocks and things like that. Apparently, according to my testing, Ryzen is faster. Now let's look at a bit of a different um, CPU utilization test, which is Geekbench 5. Now that tests more like everyday applications and things like that. And there we're going to get the single core on the i9 is actually faster by 3.47%. And the multi-core is faster on the Ryzen 3950X by 28.7%. Now doing the graphics card tests on the Geekbench 5s, so CUDA, OpenCL and Vulkan scores, all of them are better on the 10900K, well actually RTX 3070 which is in there, the Founders Edition. The CUDA cores are 54.6% better, OpenCL is 57% better and the Vulkan is actually only 2.8% better. I know that this should have much better Vulcan score, but I don't know why I only got 90,000 of the Vulcan score. Now, another thing I noticed when doing the benchmark is that when doing the CUDA benchmarks, you can't do it with a studio driver on the graphics card. You have to have a game ready driver, otherwise the benchmark just won't run. It just completely like, dissolves and nothing comes up. And I was like, what is wrong? Updated it to the game ready driver or the game driver and then it was apparently fine. Now, moving on to Blender benchmarks, which is just testing like the rendering speed of the CPU and GPU. Now, uh, I'm actually gonna give you just the, the one of the shorter renders and then one of the longer renders, the BMW render and vector render. And as you can expect, our 10900K is 63.1% slower on the BMW render and 60.4% slower 
on the Victor render. So over 60% slower on both of these. Now moving on to the GPU, uh, the BMW on the <laughs> lockdown in England, it's a bit mental. Now moving on to the GPU, which actually does the test. Now moving on to the GPU, which actually does the, the render much, much faster than the CPU. The 3070 is 48.5% better on the BMW render and 46% better on the Victor render. The interesting thing here to say is that 2060 Super is actually slower on the Victor render than the actual CPU 3950X, which is interesting. 3950X did the Victor render at 8 minutes and 2 seconds, whereas the Victor render on the 2060 Super is only 9 minutes and 23 seconds. Now the last benchmark of the hardware would be the OS drives and SSDs inside. Now both of these PCs have loads of different SSDs inside like SATA SSDs and M.2 NVMe SSDs. Obviously on the Ryzen we have uh, PCIe 4.0 speeds so the actual uh, OS drive on there, read and write speeds are 4.8 gigabytes on the read speed and 4.2 gigabytes on the write speed and on this side over here the 10 and 900k we have 3.3 gigabytes on the write speed and 2.4 gigabytes on the write speed. Now there is another very fast SSD on the 10900K which is a team group SSD Cardia Zero Z340 and that one actually has a read speed about the same as the Sabrent Rocket 3.0 which is in there but the, the write speed is a little bit faster so the write speed is 2.9 gigabytes compared to the 2.4 gigabytes on these two SSDs and is only 30% slower than the PCIe 4.0. Regardless, very fast SSD speeds. And now the most exciting thing, Premiere Pro benchmark. Now come on over the computer and let's play 3, 2, 1, go. Have both of these PCs just frozen? Are they both frozen? Okay, okay, okay. After a few glitches. We're back. Three, two, one, press play. It's completely frozen over there, but our Intel one keeps actually going. <sighs> okay, we bricked. This one is bricked as well, so we have to figure out a different way of testing it. Big this is now a render test. Both of these exactly the same. Three, two, one, go. And uh, let's see how long this is going to take. Now, this is going to be interesting. Okay, a few. Uh, Adobe glitches later and we are here back testing these clips now. I'm gonna press play and then I'm gonna tell you what this test is. Both of them have exactly the same Premiere Pro setting so I'm gonna press play and see how this goes. The first clip over here is a clip from Sony a7S3 422 10-bit uh, 4K H.264 codec and let's see how well do the playback. None of them dropped any frames over here as you can see. Now we're gonna move on to red 4K raw. 3, 2, 1, go and let's see which drops more frames. So, looking at the Ryzen over here, 17 frames dropped, and Intel 10900K, zero frames dropped on this playback. Let's move on to a B-Raw 4K clips. Sorry, this is B-Raw 6K actually, and go. None of them dropped any frames, so we're gonna go to the next one, and this one over here is two 6K clips on top of each other. And bear in mind, we're playing both of them on full resolution. Press play again. Both of them seem to be dropping some frames. 10900K dropped 39 frames and Ryzen dropped 37 frames. Okay, that's neck to neck. Let's do that test again. So what's the test results now this time? 38 frames, 35 frames. <laughs> it's gone the other way. Okay, it seems like this is very equal as well. Now let's move on to another sequence. This is red 8K raw over here. Okay, looks like our GPU is playing it back right over there. CPU is absolutely maxed out on Intel and is managing to play that back. Let's have a look. 16 frames on Ryzen, 59 frames on Intel. So let's do that test again, see if we're getting any different results. Okay, this time our Ryzen CPU dropped zero frames. Intel CPU dropped 61 frames. So the Ryzen's going to get a win on red 8K clips over there. This is 12K raw now, okay? This is absolutely mental. None of them should be playing it back full speed, but let's have a look what's gonna happen. So both of them struggling, kind of stepping through, but let's see which one manages to play back. None of the CPU or GPU have been maxed out. Actually, GPU is 92, 72%. Yeah, GPU is kind of maxed out, so GPU is doing more of the load and we have more memory used on Ryzen system. Let's have a look. 
448 frames dropped and 405 frames dropped. Looks like the Intel is going to have the win on this one. Let's do it one more time, see if we're getting any different results. So look at this. The memory now is 41 gigs. We have 47 gigs on the Ryzen system used. GPU is almost like 80, 90% and CPU is around 50%. Very, very interesting. 451 and 420. So the Intel system actually wins on this one. Now, the next one over here is all of these different clips put together with color grading and zoomed in and zoomed out. So there's different stuff going on over here. We're going to press play and that should be testing the CPU and GPU at the same time because some of the effects are GPU accelerated. Some of the things can be only accelerated through CPU. None of them have dropped any frames at the moment and they're not going to drop any more because this is the Sony A7S III clip and this is completely fine. 2060 Super GPU is actually running about five degrees hotter in this system, which is much bigger system inside. Now this is going to be the last one. Three two one both premieres absolutely crashed so premieres gonna get zero points now come on please comment in the section below why should it be moving to da vinci <sighs> like the adobe test number two exactly the same thing let's see if it's gonna be any different three two one okay we have an encoding render error over here on the ryzen system three two one Okay, I don't know what's going on over here, but GPU is absolutely 100% utilized over here. Three hours later. So, what can we say? We can say that uh, this is all a big nightmare, and I wish I had some solid numbers for you. So, I'm going to give it one more chance. So basically, what I'm doing now is I'm going to change both of the graphics card drivers from game ready driver or game what's it called gamers drivers to studio drivers then we're going to see if that makes any difference this video should have taken about 20 minutes to film but yet here i am a few hours later and the computers are still crashing thanks adobe so let's try it one last time three two one go exporting okay studio driver that was the problem so looks like it's getting much better which one will finish this first looks like yeah on the intel system the cpu is still a bottleneck as you can see it's 100 percent used whereas on the ryzen system it's only 46 percent used ryzen's done and now intel's done this was when we had the GPU accelerated. Now let's do this one more time when we don't have it. And what we're going to do is change only one thing over here. We're going to change the encoding settings to VBR2 pass. Okay. And now this is going to have to go software encoding. Let's see what's going to happen now. Let's bring up the task manager so we can see what's going on. Both of the CPUs are absolutely maxed out. Everything is 100% utilized. So let's have a look. Okay, we can see that the graphics card's been a little bit more utilized now. 40 or 36% over here. Looks like Intel's dropping quite a lot of frequency now. The turbo boost has run out because it's 100% utilization. And it's 4.6 gigahertz now, not 4.8 anymore. But our Ryzen is 4.1 gigahertz running all core 4.1 gigahertz. Ryzen is done now. Intel is still running at 80. So Intel is running quite hot at the moment. So let's see, Intel is still going and Intel is done now. Let's conclude this very confusing thing. So which one is better? In some of the things, the Intel system is better. In some of the things, the Ryzen system is better. Now, if you need pure render performance of the CPU, then the Ryzen system is much better. Now, if you use quite a lot of hardware accelerated things, then the GPU is actually much better on this one and will help you go that. So if you're rendering as well as GPU accelerated or your CUDA, you know, acceleration is on, then the Intel system is probably gonna win this one, but depends obviously the codex effects you're gonna use if the graphics card can utilize that. If not, then the Ryzen system is much faster, much quieter and much more power efficient as well as much cooler. So I'm gonna finish it with a question to you. If you could choose, would you choose the i9-10900K plus RTX 3070 Founders Edition or Ryzen 3950 x with 2060 super which one would you go for comment below thanks guys for watching hit that like button it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye bye